it's Tuesday, and that means it's time to get sneaky as we cover the top 10 magic items for rogues, so stay tuned. And we just get a few things out of the way up front. We do this every time, but I'm just going to throw it out there. We are not going to include in this list any legendary magic items, any artifacts, any sentient weapons, and any sort of consumable magic items, whether that be potions, poisons, scrolls, or things of that nature. We're also excluding anything that is going to be beneficial for everyone. So books and tomes, the things that give you a plus two to a given stat and then raise the limit of that stat, Anyone can benefit from any or all of those, so those have been excluded. So with that said, let's move on to the rest of the video. Number 10. Number 10 is the Stone of Good Luck, or also known as the Luck Stone. This attunement magic item in the basic rules or the Dungeon Master's Guide just gives you a plus one bonus to ability checks and saving throws. As a rogue, you're going to get the benefit of things like expertise, so you're going to get double your proficiency bonus plus whatever your ability score modifier is. If you can just tack a plus one on top of that, a plus one to ability checks is going to give you a plus one to initiative. It's going to give you a plus one to thieves tools check. So this just covers a lot, plus the benefit to saving throws is really just gravy because you're going to have, eventually, proficiency, I think, with dex, intelligence, and wisdom, and you're going to have evasion. So it synergizes really well. And it's a pretty, it's only an uncommon item, so it's something you might be able to get access to pretty early on. And if you can, I'd recommend it. Number nine. Number nine is Glamoured Studded Leather Armor. One, this is one of the only base plus one studded leather armor in the Dungeon Master's Guide or the basic rules. Obviously, you could just get plus one, plus two, or plus three studded leather armor, but this is a benefit in being plus one studded leather armor that is rare, non-attunement, and gives you a pretty cool benefit. You can use a bonus action to speak its command word to cause the armor to assume the appearance of a normal set of clothing or some other kind of armor. And you get to decide what it looks like. So my thought process is you are a rogue, you're sneaking around, perhaps you want to be in a social situation, you put on your glamoured studded leather armor and you transform it into normal looking clothes and then no one suspects that you're ready for combat as you've got like, I don't know, a booted dagger and you're in your armor, but people just think you're out for a night on the town and the only way they, way they will be the wiser is they physically touch you to feel through the illusion. Number eight. Staying in theme, number eight is the Hat of Disguise. This attunement, uncommon magic item found in the base rules of the DMG, while wearing it lets you cast the Disguise Self spell on yourself at will. One of the benefits of, the di of this hat specifically is because it's the Disguise Self spell, you can choose to alter the way you look, not just your clothes, you can choose to alter the way you look and to be, say, maybe you're a human to a half-elf, a male to a female. Again, if you're going to be sneaking around, this is going to be, unless you happen to be an arcane trickster rogue, one of the only ways without other loopholes to get access to Disguise Self to let you be better at sneaking by changing your entire appearance. Number seven. Number seven is the Robe of Eyes. This rare attunement magic item is found in the base rules or the DMG. And my thought process behind this is you are the rogue, you are out there, you will possibly have people out against you because you may have stole stuffing from a local lord, or you're just trying to keep eyes on all sorts of traps and things sneaking up on the party when you're scouting in the dungeon. So what is this going to give you? It lets you see in 360 degrees, first of all, so it should be very hard to sneak up on you and it gives you advantage on perception checks that rely on sight. On top of that, advantage on perception checks gives you a plus five to your passive perception, so that's going to increase that as well. Now you can see in 360 degrees, and your passive perception is better. It's going to give you dark vision out to a range of 120 feet, so most races don't have access to that, and if you happen to be a race that doesn't have dark vision, or even if you are one that's, say, not a drow or an underdark race, your dark vision has expanded an additional 60 feet, so you're that much better at keeping track of stuff underground. And you can see invisible creatures and objects, as well as into the ethereal plane, out to a distance of 120 feet. So that's going to give you... Nothing's probably going to sneak up on you at this point. The only thing that it doesn't see through is illusions, 
but you'll at least see whatever it is coming. The only downside to it is you can close your eyes if you want, but you are always considered to have your eyes open because that's the nature of the robe. The downside is if someone casts light on the robe itself or daylight within five feet of you, you are blinded. At the end of each of your turns, you can make a con save, DC 11 for light, 15 for daylight, ending the blindness. So potentially, if you roll well on your con save, the blindness would only be for a turn, but you're a rogue, you're probably going to be in the dark, you're going to be sneaking all around, so this has a pretty decent benefit. Number six. Again, seemingly with a the theme, number six is the eyes of minute seeing. This uncommon magic item from the DMG or the base rules, uh, basically what this is going to do is it's going to let you see much better out to a range of one foot. You have advantage on investigation checks that rely on sight while searching an area or studying an object within that range. So chances are, as the rogue, you are sneaking ahead, possibly scouting. You are sneaking into someone's, you know, study to find something. You are searching for traps. And in my general experience, more often than not, when a DM asks you to actively search for a trap, they make you make an investigation check. This is going to give you advantage on that check. And once again, advantage on a check means plus five to the passive. So if you're wearing the robe of eyes and the eyes of minute seeing, you're going to have a plus five bonus to your passive perception checks, a plus five bonus to your passive investigation checks. And let's say you happen to get observant as a feat that's based right there, a plus 10 to investigation and or plus 10 to your passive investigation and your passive perception. It starts as 10. So without with a zero and no proficiency with these two items, you'd be at a minimum 20 passive investigation and 20 passive perception. Then tack on proficiency in those skills, tack on expertise in those skills, and then a positive modifier in each. Nothing's going to be able to sneak up on you, and you should see everything coming. Number five. Number five is honestly just fun, and I think it fits on a rogue, and that's the Bracer of Flying Daggers. These rare attunement magic items are found in Waterdeep Dragon Heist. They are worn specifically by Jarlaxle Bayenry of Bregan de Earth. Uh, the kind of leader of that, and this is something he's known for in all of the Drizzt novels, is his seemingly unending flurry of magic daggers that he throws at his enemies. Uh, so what's cool about these is as an action, you pull two daggers from the bracer and immediately hurl them, making a ranged attack with each dagger. A dagger vanishes if you don't hurl it right away, and the daggers disappear right after they hit or miss. It never runs out of daggers. So if you miss that one... They are magic daggers, so they will overcome damage resistance to anything that requires magic uh, attacks. Also, as an action, you can throw two daggers, um, making two attacks. So this lets you make two attacks for one attack action. So potentially, if you're looking to get sneak attack, this is going to give you two attacks in one action. Um, the only trick of it is... It is you're not wielding a weapon in your main hand when you throw them, so you can't use your bonus action to make an offhand strike with a dagger because, um, actually, no, it doesn't state that you need to do that. So you could technically have dagger in your offhand, pull two daggers from your main hand and throw both. It's a little tricky. It depends on how your DM runs that. So you could theoretically, as an action, make two ranged weapon attacks throwing daggers and then make an offhand attack with a bonus action. <clears throat> I'm not sure if the qualifier off the top of my head is you have to have a weapon in your main hand and then you have to have a weapon in your offhand to be able to make the offhand bonus action attack. I think that's the case. So you may only be able to make the two attacks. But if that's the case, this is letting you make two regular attacks with your attack, you know, ranged weapon attacks, which means without having the um, the two weapon fighting style, these should both have your dexterity modifier added to the damage. Then that also frees you up to use your bonus action for anything else you want to use as, as a rogue. Disengage, dodge, hide. You could do that, make two attacks, and they'll still get your modifier. And theoretically, if you have two strikes that hit, one of them should likely, and it's one action does both attacks, so if you were hidden first, both of these attacks should have advantage because they're happening simultaneously. So I like it. Again, it really only fits if you want to be the thrown dagger sort of archetype of rogue. But it, I mean, honestly, anybody could benefit from this. Number four. 
Number four is the Bracers of Archery. These uncommon entombment magic items are in the DMG or the basic rules. And the reason I put these here is chances are, as a rogue, you're going to be using some form of ranged weapon. Uh, it could be a crossbow, but I feel like more often than not, a lot of rogues fall back on the short bow because you're given the short bow as a proficiency. Unless you happen to be an elven um, or some sort of race that's going to give you proficiency with a weapon, you probably won't have proficiency with a longbow. However, if you have these bracers, it gives you proficiency with longbow and shortbow, and then on top of that gives you a plus two bonus to the damage with those weapons. So if you happen to, if you choose to do this, this will give you the opportunity to use a longbow as a rogue without having to choose a race that you may not want to choose. Right? If you don't want to be an elf or some, I can't think of any other race off the top of my head that lets you choose a martial weapon proficiency or gives you longbow. This lets you, for instance, be a human rogue, but still use a longbow. Plus you get the plus two bonus to the damage, and if you choose to multi-class, let's say one level into fighter, you'll get the fighting style, you could choose the archery fighting style, and this would give you a plus two to attack, and then this would give you, uh, that would give you a plus two to attack, and this would give you a plus two to damage. And honestly, the more times you can hit something as a rogue, the better it's gonna be, because the more times you hit, the more chances you have at sneak attack. Number three. Number three is the Sword of Wounding. This rare attunement magic item uh, is in the basic rules or the DMG. And you're a rogue, you're going to need some kind of weapon. A sword probably would be your best option. Uh, and you're going to probably want it to be finesse so you can benefit from sneak attack. So that's going to leave you with a short sword or a rapier or as your options. Thankfully, a Sword of Wounding, one, it fits the rogue theme. And it also happens to be any sword. So it could be a rapier or a short sword, which gives you the option. Personally, I choose the rapier because it's a D8. But what it does is hit points lost to this weapon's damage can only be regained through a short or long rest uh, rather than regeneration magic or by any other means. So if you get into a fight with a group of enemy players or with a cleric or something like that, uh, and you nick them with your sword, the only way they can heal is by a short or long rest Therefore, uh, healing potions or clerical magics are completely shut down, which is a huge benefit depending on um, the, what the creature is. Or if it's some sort of legendary creature with a turn-by-turn -turn regeneration, this shuts that down too. Uh, and then once per turn when you hit a creature with an attack using this weapon, you can wound the target. At the start of each of the wounded creature's turn, it takes a d4 necrotic damage for each wound you've given it and it can make a DC 15 con save, ending the effect of all such wounds on a success. Alternatively, the wounded creature or creature within five feet can use their action to make a DC 15 wisdom medicine check, uh, ending the effect on such wounds on a success. Um, at the start, so, but the thing is, uh, and I feel like people sometimes overlook this, I, again, it's very roguey in its theme, but each time you hit them, it adds a new wound. So at the start of their turn, they take the damage. If you hit that person five times, at the start of its turn, it's going to take 5d4 necrotic damage. And remember, every little bit counts with this because they can't heal magically. So everything you're going to do is just going to progress until they get to take that long rest. So all you really need to do is clip them once to shut the healing down. But the more you hit them with this... Uh, if they can't make that DC 15 con save, it's just going to continue to wear their health down, and you're possibly going to just knock them out that way. Again, I picked this. There's a lot of good options, but any magic weapon would do, but the Sword of Wounding has the most roguish feel to it. Number two. Number two, to I'm sure no one's surprise, is the Gloves of Thievery. Uncommon magic item found in the Dungeon Master's Guide is non-attunement, these gloves, once you put them on, they turn completely invisible, so no one would know you have them. And while worn, they give you a plus five bonus to sleight of hand checks and dexterity checks made to pick locks. You are a rogue. Chances are you're probably going to try to sleight of hand something out of someone's pocket or into someone's pocket. And if you're a rogue, chances are you're going to be picking locks at some point in your career. And getting a flat plus five bonus to it is huge. I also say this is a big benefit because if you choose to take your four expertise in one of them not in Thieves Tools because you're not a lock-picky rogue, if you take, say, expertise in, I don't know, acrobatics, sleight of hand, deception, and uh, perception, as ex for example, 
that doesn't give you expertise in thieves tools. So you still have proficiency and adding your dexterity modifier to those checks, but this is gonna give you a flat out plus five to that. So this may even that out entirely. Or if you choose to get expertise in that, this is gonna put you on a whole nother level and it's gonna be very difficult to find a lock that you can't pick. Number one. And finally, number one is Boots of Elvenkind. I'm sure you knew this was going to be some item that's going to give you advantage on stealth checks. You're a rogue, you're going to want to have it. I picked the Boots of Elvenkind because they are uncommon and they are non-attunement and they're basic rules in DMG. But while you wear these boots, your steps make no sound regardless of the surface you're moving across. And you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks to rely uh, on moving silently. So technically, um, if you're hiding... You, do, you don't get the benefit of this. For that, you'd want the Cloak of Elvenkind, where you put the hood up. It gives people disadvantage on perception checks to see you and advantage on stealth checks. The Boots of Elvenkind give you advantage on stealth, sex, stealth checks not to be heard. The Cloak of Elvenkind, Elvenkind gives you advantage on stealth checks not to be seen. But the Cloak is attunement. The Boots are not. Alternatively, you could go with, I think, the Cloak of the Bat, which gives you advantage on stealth checks in dim light. It also gives you the ability to fly and transform yourself into a bat once a long rest. So that has a benefit too. But you're a rogue. You're going to be sneaking. Get yourself something that lets you sneak better. So anyway, guys, that's my top 10 list of magic items for rogues. I hope you enjoyed this. This one I had a lot of fun with. My crazy week at work is over, and I'm sure you can tell in my demeanor and my energy level in this video that I'm feeling so much better now that it's over. Um, also, guys, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm just going alphabetically through the DM or through the player's handbook. So next will be sorcerer, then it will be warlock, then it will be wizard, and then by this time, because in a couple hours from now, or by the time you're watching this video, uh, artificer will be out. So we're gonna do sorcerer, warlock, wizard, artificer, and then someone asked me to do Matt Mercer's blood hunter class, so I'll do that one after that as well. And then we'll roll into some new top ten video territory. Who knows what we'll do after that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've been enjoying this series of top 10 videos every Tuesday. Seems like you guys have been. We are ever approaching 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I'm going to be doing a massive giveaway when I hit that. A lot of my friends and partners that I work with in the D&D RPG community are going to be providing cool stuff for me to give to you guys. So tell your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to the, uh, the channel already, please do so. The closer we hit to that, uh, the better chance I'll get to put out more cool stuff for you guys and get you some cool giveaways. Uh, I also do stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and every other Sunday on Twitch. I do things from world building, character building, and then just flat out gameplay or one shots. So be sure to come check that out. Um, I hope to see you there. There's a link in the description if you want to check that out as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you with the Sorcerer next week.